So what are your choices when it comes to lining the inside of your fresh tub on your truck? You can go out, spend you know, four figures on getting the full commercial coating done. You can get a plastic tub liner, which strengths and weaknesses, probably the biggest weakness with those things are they just are so slippery. And then you're gonna have rattling, that sort of thing, and guys tend to worry about is it gonna get moisture, rust underneath, that sort of thing. Or then you've got the DIY paint solution. The good thing with the DIY paint solution is it's coated, so you know it's not gonna have any rust. It's an easy one to touch up, even if you're gonna abuse it. To refinish it before you sell the truck or rebirth the truck, give it a new lease on life, you can knock over everything and paint over it and it'll still come up brand new. So we've got our truck here, and the whole justification on this project was if we can paint one side with the bully, the other side with the Raptor, we can actually go out and test this in a real world application. We'll take this truck out, we'll throw it around the circuit, door handle to door handle racing, we'll bring it home, we'll wash it as you would as if you took your truck out and you went through the bush in it, and then we'll evaluate it from there. So let's get into it. So we've got the banded painted now. We painted this half here with the bully, and we painted that side with the Raptor. Even on the bars, we've done the same, where we used it, the tinted Raptor, and we put a base coat metallic in it, and we painted that half with it. And then we painted this side with the dust gray, which is a standard bully color. So we painted the Raptor first. One of the tricks was to, we had these stickers, so because it was a textured paint, we had to put them down first, then mask around it. The Raptor has a lot of fallout. Being catalyzed, you paint it on the ground, we had drop sheets down. All right if you've got a proper booth and you're set up with perfect filtration, but in a DIY environment, sticking on the floor, sticking to yourself, a little bit more painful, but we're gonna see how it goes durability-wise. It, it's hard, the, the product is hard. It's, you can see the gloss level, it is shiny. You can add a matting base to dull it down, which I did notice in the back. Gloss level, patchiness. You've really got to be conscious of it when you apply it. The Bully, water-based, easy, no mask, fallout's minimum. It is much easier to apply. You pretty much just pick it up, shoot. I actually left some in the gun overnight and got in and spotted it the next day. It wasn't even dry. If I did that with the, with the Raptor, it'd be hard, gun, forget, good night, throw away. What we did test though, is we painted over the Bully liner directly with a, a two-pack direct gloss paint, which is catalyzed. And it stuck to it, it's no problems. It hasn't eaten into it as far as delaminated it. We also painted over it down on the body side near the door handle with just red acrylic pressure pack. No problems at all. So, proves that you can paint over the bully. I suppose the real test is, let's go out and use it, see how they perform. truck out, we raced it, conditions were muddy and muddy, we gurneyed everything, high pressure washed everything, we left it for a week, we come back and then we sponge washed it with soap and high pressure did it again. What we did find was the Raptor, which is on this side, being having a higher gloss level, when you put water on it, it is slippery, so it was easy to wash. Where the Bully liner, when you put water on it, it had some sort of grip, it offered some grip, which made it that little bit harder to wash. So you're gonna spend a little bit more time washing it. You're probably gonna want a broom to go over it to get everything out of the valleys. But all in all, they've cleaned up really well, the product. So we've got the Raptor here. And as you recall, we had a whole bunch of finishes here from the top coat paint 
Santa true to the multi-layer wedding cake that we had through to bare steel. And then we left this raw with the spot welds. But what you can see, that these paints are really forgiving. And we can hardly even see these spot welds here. There's no onion ring or shadow through from the different layers, which you'd typically see if you were gonna try and finish this in a standard exterior paint being a two pack or a acrylic or an enamel. So for a vehicle that's had a lot of work done to it or birthdays and it's pretty rough, which is usually your four wheel drive market, it's actually looks really good. So you can see here, this is where we remodeled the front end of the truck into a Subaru. And you can see the paint, we've got our Raptor here, but there's definitely an adhesion issue here, not with the Raptor. You can see what the Raptor's stuck to, a whole different layer of paints, but we can see here, this paint is still shiny. So the original color of this vehicle was blue. Someone's then put a primer over the top, which this being shiny means they haven't prepped it. They haven't sanded it well enough to allow that primer to stick into it, which means everything else, as soon as you get some flexion, it's gonna delaminate. So sanding is the key. The paint's gonna hold on as good as you can prep it. And in this case, more sanding was required. So always get rid of the gloss, get rid of the shine. When you got rid of that, you're ready to paint. So you may recall this front right hand fender. This was a donor from the little Frontier that we got and it was caved in here where a forklift had picked up the car. We bashed it out, we put a lot of filler in there and then we put a single coat of etch primer over the top just to seal the filler and then we've painted over it. If we had painted over it with a high gloss finish, it'd be terrible. The good thing with the bully is it's covered it all up. Even up here, there was a step where the filler needed more in it and we've been able to coat that enough that it's come up and it, it looks pretty good. Even this, where the snorkel was and we crudely tacked in a piece, you can still see the spot worlds where we hadn't knocked them back. However, this paint being a membrane style paint, you're not gonna see any cracking in it. It's gonna move and elongate with what it needs to, but the finish of it, for this vehicle or anything that you got that's rough and tough, it's gonna cover it up and make it look fantastic. So both of these paints are actually designed as a, a ute liner or a bed liner for a pickup where they're gonna texture it up and give you some durability. We've painted this side closest to me with the Raptor and the far side, the half of it's coated with the Bully. With all this jungle gym of uh, bars in here, <laughs> we can't put much in it. But what we did find, the Raptor itself, it's a little bit slippery as such. What UPOL do offer with this is a traction paint, which is an additive that you can put in, which is a form of grains or sand that can go in with it. You'll add that in there and that'll make it as grippy as you need. So what we wanna do is we wanna chuck a few things in here and simulate how we're gonna use it. So I've got some tools down here, just some random tools we picked up out of the workshop. We'll put them in as if it was time to knock off and go home. So you can see here the saw marks where we've chucked a saw in carelessly. Keep in mind this is a fairly square edge. A lot of vehicles don't have this. This is, this is handmade where you'll have soft flowing tubs. So to get an impact like that, this is probably the extreme of it. And then back here you can have a look where we chucked our heavyweight hammer in as a bit of steel. Reality is it can only take so much abuse. So to compare the bully, time to go home now. Now we're gonna give it the hammer test. Now if this was a, a gloss two pack painted, anything we drag on it, we're gonna see straight away. Being textured, the paint's always gonna be more favorable to wear and tear, but I guess this is what people wanna see, so. So now for the bully side.
What we were impressed with though, with the claw of the hammer, you can see here it's knocked off the highs of the texture and it's changed the gloss level a bit. You rub over it, you don't really notice it. So, still quite a durable finish that we got here. So, another test we got here is the good old rope burn one. We've had customers that have used products like this and on square edges of uh, hollow steel, rectangle hollow steel, they've complained that the paint's cut through. What you've got to keep in mind is this is a paint coating. It's a polymer, it's a plastic. If we use a nylon-based rope, it's like sandpaper. On a bigger radius like this, we can run the, the rope test. And you can see how abrasive this rope is that it will actually, it is taking product off. You can see it's knocked off all the highs, it's a very slight divot. The paint still performs quite well in my opinion, but if we then took it to a sharper edge here, which if we simulated this was a rectangle hollow section, and the radius is much smaller, you're gonna see it wants to burn through. Keeping in mind, this is a paint, if you've got an application like this that's going to see this, whether you're in the hunting game, you'd want to put a cap, an aluminium cap over this where you know your rope's going to sit because the metallic surface is going to be stronger than the rope. So what you need to keep in mind is these are DIY solutions. If you want something that you can drive a shovel into and not chip, there's people out there that have these commercial applications and these are people that are typically franchised in, got all the equipment, it's gonna cost you four times the amount to get the product put on and it's gonna be a lot thicker. So if you wanna rework it or you've got issues down the track, even to grind it off, it's hard work. The other advantage with these ones is you can refinish them. So there are some strengths in them and the affordability, the price level at what you can get into, you can do it in smaller applications. And this is actually one left over from when we painted the truck. You screw the lid on, I could put a gun in this and we could paint it again right now. The other thing with the bully is the grip that it offers in the back, it's actually quite good. It's probably to the level that you'd be happy to stick cargo in and it wouldn't slide around. The other thing that we did have to do with this, the bully comes in a range of colours. There's about eight different colours, but if you wanted a colour that's not there, the other option, you can paint over it. So we actually painted over this with a two pack and we painted over another stripe down here on the front with an acrylic. Sticks, it's fine. The other good thing with the bully is if we wanted to paint over it again now, we wouldn't need to do any prep. You'd just wipe it down, clean it down, paint over and it'll stick to itself. If you're using the Raptor, because of the satin sort of glossy finish it's got, you're gonna need to sand it back, get it to a rough state and then paint over it from there. So the Bully is, as a DIY solution, much easier to use. It, it's dead simple, pick it up, shoot. Example is we've got some damage down here, which you go, oh, I missed a bit, it's a week later. Come in, pick up your tin. This brush is nice and stiff. And just come and fill that up. When that dries, we could keep filling up to get it back level. There's no film build limit on this. And then I can just sort of blend it out. And we'll see how that dries and you won't even notice it. So as far as a refinishing goes, this product is good to use. We always have some in the workshop and due to its convenience, it's probably the first one you pick up. Even when we're painting MDF, timbers, that sort of thing, uh, it works quite well. We've got a couple of bits of overspray here when we did our red stripes. What we can do is just go in and brush over these. By the time these are dry, you won't even notice the difference. The good thing is, it being water-based, we could get a, a wet rag. So, brush this face. So what it ultimately comes down to is what best suits your needs. If you need to match the exterior body colour of your vehicle, you can get the tinnable Raptor and match it. If you like the fact that the satin gloss level works for you, go with the Raptor. If you like the fact that the bully is water-based, you can screw the lid on, pick it up six months later, and it still won't be dry. You can dip a brush in, it's easy to touch up, go with the bully.
The other thing to consider is the Bully is manufactured in Australia and is slightly cheaper to get into. When we took this truck out, it actually looked too good for, to race for what we had actually intended, which is gonna make you look like quite the capable tradesman.